now. Flores on your left. David Thomas is on your right. And we'll be underway here in round number two momentarily. Keep in mind, rounds number three and four, they'll be standard. Matthias Hunt and Ryan Overturf, they'll be up here in the booth with their bingo cards, getting ready to bring you some more action. But now, David Thomas is going to start things off with the land, and Michael Flores will do the same. He's got an irrigated farmland. We're going to go over to Dave Thomas, the Texas native who's made the trip out here. He'll play an island, pass that turn back. I think both players might be realizing now that we are in a mirror. And have they tested the mirror? We'll find out soon enough as the planes is the play there for Flores. Thomas with the plane, so he'll pass the turn back. Mike is going to cycle a cast out. Doesn't do a ton in the mirror, so he'll cycle there. Actually, I actually think game one, it does nothing. Well, Thomas does have Search for Escanta. Okay. That is so, that. And that's that a good card. So uh, Flores, I believe, also on, on two copies. Okay. An island there for Mike. And Dave's going to do a little cycling. He'll cycle his own cast out. As these players are very well aware that they're in the mirror now. Irrigated farmland there for David Thomas, and now Flores is going to cycle a cast out yet again. So Michael draw, scan through the hand, he'll be untapping, we'll go to his fourth turn here. He's picked up the planes. Now for the first handful of turns here, Patrick, and it's pretty obvious, just hit your land drops, right? That's the goal, and you have a lot of dead weight to cycle too, so. That's kind of step one, that's kind of the easy part. Now Thomas has found a copy of Approach. But Mike has found, I think, maybe the more important card here in Hieroglyphic Illumination. So he's found one of his draw twos. Now, both players are playing copies of draw twos. Mike has four copies of Hieroglyphic Illumination. Dave is going to actually play a copy of Pool from Tomorrow, a card that we actually haven't seen a ton of upon its release. So I, I think this card is a, it, it's a killer of mid-range decks. I think the problem with it right now is most of the mid-range decks are siding into a bunch of negates. Yes. But there are worlds where this card is one of the best things going on. Sphinx's Revelation, it is not. Right. Be clear about that. But it is still a good card, a little bit underrepresented. And it looks like Mike has a field of ruin there. He'll discard a Fumigate, doesn't do anything in this matchup. But we head back over to David Thomas, he'll draw a card. Another irrigated farmland. Flores will just draw. No end of turn effects. Both players just focusing on hitting their land drops for now. Now there is the card that you feel matters. Yes. In Ipnu Rivulet. A card that we will take a look at here in just a moment. As Thomas is going to play a Glimmer of Genius. He'll get some energy, of course. So this desert taps for a colorless. Okay, who cares? Pay a life, tap for a blue. Again, who really cares? Life total not really under duress. But one in a blue, sacrifice a desert. Target player puts the top four cards of his or her library in his or her graveyard. And you're thinking that's going to come down to milling, huh? Well, I don't know. How else does the game end? You can, <laughs> you can resolve approach, maybe, against whatever this handful of counter spells. Yeah. Alternatively, someone can get decked. And this gives Flores a huge edge if the game comes down to decking. Now, here's what's tough for Thomas. Thomas does not have... If Ipnu Rivulets, excuse me, of his own, as he does play a copy of Approach. Flores tied it with a sensor. Yes, he did. And now Flores is going to play a Glimmer of Genius of his own, so he'll scry too. He'll get some energy as well. Yeah, you're feeling as though resolving Approaches is going to be tough. Yes, not impossible. Yeah. But also keep in mind that Flores, with those Rivulets, also has a lot of agency over whether or not Thomas draws the Approach. That's correct. Because he can also mill it out if it's about to be drawn. Mm-hmm. So Flores will draw a card for the turn, and he'll play a Plains. Take a little look here at David Thomas's graveyard. And Mike does have an approach of his own in hand. If he's willing to tap out here, I mean, it puts uh, Thomas under some amount of pressure to do something. Coast is clear.
So nothing here from Flores. We'll head back over to David Thomas. An island there for Dave. And now there's a search for his Kanta. I'm curious to see if the powerful enchantment does resolve. So Approach is something we're going to take a look at here, which is if Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, seven from the top, and you gain seven life. So if the first Approach was countered... Second one is still lethal. Correct, if it resolves. Right. If it resolves. Okay. That's fun. Let's hear a search from his Kanta, Trigger. Now, the powerful enchantment we can take a look at here. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card in your graveyard. Then, if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard, you get to transform it into a very powerful land. It's very good in this deck. Though, a card that players don't feel like they can play four copies of. Yeah, it's legendary, and yeah. that's problematic. Looks like we have another glimmer of genius here for Thomas. He's going to go up to four energy. He split the difference on the scry. Now he's untapping. He'll be drawing here in just a moment with Search. It's also not necessarily the best against uh, the absolute fastest speed down decks of the format yeah. either. But it does it allow for something of a bitter blossom play pattern of do this and then just trade one for one a bunch and beat you with the leftovers. Now I think Thomas put the card with Search of Wisconsin on the bottom of his deck instead of milling it. Mm -hmm. So I think he needs to fix that because milling is certainly important here. Yeah. Yeah. So they will take a look at that and see if they can, yeah, they can see if they can fix that, fix this, uh, this game state. A bit of a mistake there. We do have table spotter and judge on hand, so we'll get working there. Didn't expect to see an approach mirror this early in the day, my friend. You know, it's not like these decks are that long on counter spells either. No, they're really not. Taking no. a look at Thomas's deck list, he's got four sensors, four supreme wills, two disallow. And uh, Flores's list here, I think, looks like just four copies of supreme will and sensors. So I guess it's actually not that hard for Thomas to set up a spot where he can just push through another copy of approach particularly if he's able to flip search of it for his Kanta and just set up with a bunch of counter spells. So it looks like Thomas has given a warning here, and now we're going to head back over to Flores, who will, I think, accidentally reveal the, top, the second Perfect. card. <laughs> the second, Perfect. The second card of his deck. So, That's great. So perhaps, perhaps we maybe see a shuffle here in just a moment. Whatever. Not sure. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's search for his Kanta. All right, Dave will keep that one. Play planes past the turn back. All right, Flora's going to cycle a cast out. Doesn't actually care about the search for his Kanta. Notable. Glacial Fortress to land. Search. Here for Thomas. He'll keep that card. He'll just play a planes and pass the turn back. Just so you do know, the transform on Search for his Contas will take a look on that card. You may transform Search for his Contas. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. It's important to note. Dave Thomas clearly wants that manipulation that his enchantment is providing. That card's going to go to the graveyard and cast out. Again, doesn't have to transform if he doesn't want to. Yeah, there's not like a big rush on Thomas's end here to do something with the search mm -hmm. and it can also just be blown up via field of proof so I believe Flores is playing a perilous voyage yeah you got one yeah to bounce the search for his Kanta? sure nice little one of them Mike's bag of tricks there yeah sure what I mean yeah <laughs> And Flora's also going to cycle a sensor. He'll untap. He'll draw a card. Play Glacial Fortress. What's next here for Mike? Oh, search of his cons of his own. Sure, sure. We'll go back over to Thomas. 
Thomas with two copies of Field of Ruin in his list as well. Now Mike will watch as David plays his Search for Wisconsin again. There'll be a trigger here for Flores. Search. Take a look at the top card. Mike can do a little bit of counting here. Looks like he's going to transform. Okie dokie. Those cards look cool. <laughs> they look cool. Yeah. They did a nice job with those. You see Escanta, the sunken ruin. Taps for a blue. Then you can tap two and a blue and tap it. Look at the top four cards. Take a non-creature, non-land spell. Add it to the grip. Field of Ruin, however, is going to work itself into the equation. Very powerful card, not only in standard, but looks like maybe in older formats, too. Oh, definitely. I mean, if you weren't under, you know, the, what, where Ghost Quarter wins out is just the speed. You do it for one mana, or for zero, basically, any time. Easy to hold up. If the game's not about speed, if you just care about being able to interact with, with lands at some point over the course of the game, I think Field of Ruin is much more powerful. So now, Ascanta gone. Problem solved. So where do we go next? Thomas is going to glimmer. Split the difference. He's certainly looking for something here as Thomas. This is going to go up to six energy. Well, I would not feel comfortable, uh, I think, uh, from Thomas's side in the long game here because of Flores' Rivulets. So um, I would be just trying to shove through another copy of a approach. approach. Yeah. And with his uh, two main deck copies of Disallow, uh, I think he's reasonably well set up to do that, assuming Flores isn't really putting him under any sort of pressure. He's not forcing him to make a move. Ascanta trigger. Thomas will keep that card. He'll play an island. He's got a lot of cards in his hand. He'll discard Settle the Wreckage, because that's a blank one in the mirror. We're going to head back over to Flores. Yeah, it's interesting. Usually in, in control mirror matches, you're trying pretty desperately to not discard the hand size. Mm -hmm. You want to be cat. You know, if you get to the point where you're missing land drops, you just sort of cast whatever you can to prevent that from happening. In this matchup in this mirror there's so there's like a comical level of dead weight yes so you, it's not even it doesn't even matter you're like all right whatever <laughs> God. Yeah, just just got anything. 20 cards that don't have a text box so thomas is finding plenty of lands here flores isn't doing too bad himself both players with quite the swath of lands in the battlefield flores is going to discard another copy of settle the wreckage Ascant is going to allow Thomas to build his hand the way that he wants to. Settle the wreckage will go to the graveyard. He's not going to transform his search for his Akanta. Now, the thing is, you do have to wonder if he's scared of the fact that Mike does have that Rivulet on the battlefield and how many copies does he play. Because Mike, he plays three copies of the Rivulet. Yeah. And there's pretty much no chance that David knows that. So being milled for a handful of cards could be pretty scary stuff. Mike is going to play a Glimmer of Genius here. He's going to get two energy. He'll scry two. But obviously Thomas is building towards something. And I think I'm with you. I'm thinking it's just try to resolve the second approach through a counter war. Yep. But as you mentioned, in Flores' deck list, he doesn't really have a lot of counter magic. No, he's got four Supreme Wills and an Essence Scatter. That doesn't help. Nice. And... <laughs> His sensors were past the point of that working. One yep. copy of Commit to Memory. Okay. But, yeah, he's not... If Thomas is able just to, like, put together some disallows, uh, Flores' deck is not really that well set up to fight that kind of fight. Got it, got it. So we're going to see here. It's going to come down to can Thomas set that, set that sort of thing up before his deck becomes small enough that Flores is able to mill him out. Well, he's going to cycle a sensor here. It looks like he's going to... Look at the top couple of cards via Supreme Will. He's found a card he's happy with. This is, of course, the impulse half of Supreme Will. The rest of the cards go to the bottom. I 
And now we're untapping as David Thomas and he's drawing. He will now actually transform Searcher's Kata into the land. It feels like to me if he's doing that, this is the turn he wants to go. Probably. I mean, it, there, there was no rush for him to do anything. So if he's making a move, that's probably why. Well, here's your seven mana, folks. So here's approach. This resolves. It's a game winner. Commit of commit to memory is where Michael Flores is going to start things. And Dave has a disallow. This was the card that you felt would make all the difference. Yep. This is a this this fight right here, Flores's build game one is not really that well situated. And you see that Thomas has got a lot of mana laying around. So now here is Supreme Will, which is essentially mana leak targeting disallow. Ooh. Uh, stack of three or more spells. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hold on. Nice. Go ahead and stamp that. And just to be clear, I mean, Flores actually put the card on top of it. He actually yeah. built a stack for you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. No, no problem, man. No problem. Player gains six plus life in a game. Pretty live here. <laughs> yeah. Pretty live approach resolves. Feeling pretty good about that. Actually, it'll yeah, just yeah. win. It won't yeah, gain life. It. This is yeah. a sham. It's a poorly built bingo board. So Thomas has paid the mana on the Supreme Will. Oh, watch a standard match without an energy deck. Count that. <laughs> Sensor cycled. Sorry, I'm Count I'm, that. You're a little yeah. behind on the board here. Yeah, I gotta, okay. I gotta, I gotta, yeah. gotta catch up. Yeah. Gotta catch up. That's okay. So disallow is still on the stack targeting commit. While Patrick's cleaning up his bingo board here. Apologies to at all of you at watching at home. Yeah. Now here's a looks like a Supreme Will again. Talking disallow and Thomas, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay. Yep. Hard to do this with mana leaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thomas is prepared for three and, leaks. And uh, you know, it actually could come up here that Thomas transformed that search for his Kanta. Yeah, he I might need the remaining three mana. I do not think this was an accident. Flores is gonna cycle. Irrigated farmland. What comes next? Essence scatter. Yeah, not no, no, not you. Settle the wreckage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to rattle off a sensor. sensor. Yeah. <laughs> Flores is exploring his options. I'm not feeling great about this. He's going to cycle sensor, not going to cast it. And so now approach is going to resolve, and David Thomas is going to win the game and not gain life. Thank you so much, David. As he does win game number one here over Michael Flores, the blue-eyed approach mirror goes to your player on the right. That's a disallowance, like you mentioned, man. Yep. That's what makes the difference. Big deal there. We're going to get to the sideboards here between Michael Flores and David Thomas in a moment. That means to settle the wreckage and all the other nonsense is going to come out in just a sec. But first, a couple messages from our sponsors. Big news, everybody. Team Cedric's got another spot on his bingo board. Now, you can find those at Star City Games on the old Twitter. I just retweeted from my main account. Patrick doesn't retweet things, so that's totally fine. But cast out cycled, yes, please. Lock it in. So we take a look at the sideboards. We're going to start with Michael Flores, who's got four Authority of the Councils, three Regal Caracal, three Treasure Map, two Negate, two, two Torrential Gearhawk, and Awakening Sun's Avatar. I guess a couple cards. Uh, well, I guess the question is if you want the, the cats. At the baseline, Treasure Maps, uh, Negate, and Torrential Gear Hulk are great here. If you just want to have more threats in the deck, I could see going that road, but I, I would probably just keep it to the seven. I'm going to go over to David Thomas, who's got four cats of his own, three Baral, Chief of Compliance, three Authority of the Councils, three Negates, and two Torrential Gear Hulk. Baral, huh? Baral's him sweet. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this is going to come down to counter wars where mana is going to be at a premium. The counter and, and loot is not trivial here either. Uh, so yeah, that along with the negates and the torrential gear hoax. I actually maybe the cats, but I would not play. I, I would not bring them. In. I actually kind of forgot that brawl is standard legal. 
Right. Because I just think of it in Modern Storm right. and older formats, but... The two text boxes on that card lend themselves a lot more to eternal formats than to standard. Yeah, now that's, that's is a, this is a nice little inclusion. On one side you're going to see Veralls, on the other side you're going to see Treasure Maps. I guess we'll find out which of those cards is better mm -hmm. in, uh, in this mirror <laughs> after sideboard <laughs> as these players take a look at their openers. We're underway. Flores with an island to Dave Thomas. He has land of his own. Again, you got to remember, to kick things off, it's just about hitting land drops. That's the key. Now, these players do have plenty of cards to cycle, which is important. I mean, it's going to be easier for hitting their land drops, as Thomas has another island. We're going to go back over to Flores. He'll play a Field of Ruin. And he's going to play a Treasure Map! Are you sure that's not Ben Stark in the future match area? This is a sweet design. You like Treasure Map. Gameplay plus flavor, I think, are both... Excellent. Well, it got negated. Now, what it wanted to do is two-man artifact. One, scry one, put a, a landmark counter on treasure map. But that's not going to happen anymore. No. That's Damn. not going to happen. Search for this Kanta, however, is going to resolve. So that's that's on the battlefield. Treasure map, it does a bunch of transforming and treasures and drawing cards and all these other things. But it's not on the battlefield, so it doesn't matter. Search for this Kanta is on the battlefield. It does matter. And it helped Dave Thomas win game number one. Thomas with land number four. Here's a glimmer of genius from Michael Flores. And it looks like Flores is going to have that countered via sensor. I was curious if Thomas actually had some interest in fighting over the card drawing spells. That, an that question got answered. However, treasure map is going to resolve now. Sensor will be cycled. Does Flores have land number five? He does. Oh, treasure map's out there. So let's go back and look at the artifact again now. Since it's actually on the battlefield. I want to take a look at it one more time. So, one tap, scry one. Put a, not, put a landmark counter on treasure map. Then if there are three or more landmark counters on it, remove three counters, transform treasure map, and create three colorless treasure artifact tokens. With one, sacrifice this, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And when it does transform, we'll take a look at the second half a little bit later. But for now, we keep our attention back on the game. Two energy there from Thomas from his glimmer. Flores will scry thanks to the treasure map. Get a new die. Yep. We can't see that. There we go. There we go. You, you yeah, okay? There we go. You okay? I'm good. All right. <laughs> I'm good now. <laughs> now I can see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Brawl, Chief of Compliance, is going to resolve. This isn't modern. Doesn't mean Flores is dead right now. Don't see this card in standard very often, but it's here. Making everything just a little bit cheaper for David Thomas. Thomas's mana right now a little wonky. This here's a torrential gear hulk. Yeah, it's so no. That's getting essence scattered. Can't let that thing resolve. That thing's huge. One mana essence scattered, by the way. Yeah, and still in the deck because Thomas knows torrential gear hulk is the plan. Well, he's got him as himself. Yeah. So he's got to expect that Mike will have two. No, the treasure map here from Flores. David Thomas going to untap. Search for his Kanta trigger means that Thomas will take a look. He's going to mill that top card. He has no interest in transforming his enchantment just yet, though I think he is one card short of transforming it. Here comes Brawl in for one. Oof. And he's in the same spot where Field of Ruin just tags it, so yes. not a big rush. All right. Flores will scry one with his new treasure map. Two counters on one, one on the other. And looks like this might be a pool from tomorrow here. So this is a pool for four. Remember, it's one cheaper because of the Brawl. Correct. And DT will have to discard a card here in just a moment. We're going to go back over to Flores now, who's almost ready to start transforming some treasure maps here. Now Search for is going to transform. Alexander Costello, the last round on modern is paired. Please find your seat. Alex Costello to modern, please. Thomas might be in a spot here where he says, you know what, if you do want a field of ruin my, uh, my land, totally fine. Eh, he can draw a card off of it once mm -hmm. if he wants to. There is on Ascanta, the sunken ruin. The big question about this game now is just how much is Treasure Map going to change things as there is another copy 
of Sertra Escanta. Because now Flores is right on the precipice of transforming one. Field of Ruin's gonna go after Ascanta, the Sunken Ruin. Dave says that does not resolve just yet. Because he can disallow the trigger. <laughs> Stifle your land. That is nice. Put it in the graveyard. That is nice. Now, I'm not sure if that's what he's doing right now or not, but he can do that. He might be casting Glimmer right now. All right, so he'll, he'll scry. He's up to four energy. And now, okay. Okay. It will resolve. But disallow is an option there. Right. I'd be surprised with, with Thomas having another copy of Search for Edge Conta and how important the hard counters are in this matchup. I, I would have been surprised if he wanted to pick a battle over that, uh, but it is an option. Oh, dude, someone activated the Scarab God last round. That was Sam Black. Oh, yeah. There yeah. we go. A little, a little behind here on the bingo board. One, mm -hmm. two. I got, I got six to your six to your five. Feeling pretty good about this. Feeling pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh-oh, Treasure Cove. Treasure Cove is here. All right, so you tap it to add a colorless, or you can sacrifice a treasure to draw a card. Flores does have three treasures on the battlefield now. He's going to scry one with his other treasure map. No worthy that these are non-legendary, in contrast to search. Very true. Let's, uh, let's act a treasure draw card, shall we? All right, Flores' final land puts that on the battlefield right away. Now we're going to go over David Thomas. Trigger. He'll transform. Ascanta is back. As Torrential Gear Hulk is the draw. In for one. Rediscovered. <laughs> you found it again? We found it. We, we, we lost it briefly. Yep. We found, yeah. we, we found the city again. Nice. Must be a pretty nice city if people are always trying to find it. And Must it's getting blown up. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Must be some goodies down there. Four mana. Hieroglyphic Illumination. That's a mouthful. Draw two cards. Could have just named it Inspiration. Make my job easier. But it's okay. It's okay. Inspiration never cycled. No. Might be too good if it did. It's interesting. There's a... They sometimes release their developer comments, their files. Yeah. Their playtest files for articles. And someone said, you know, I really like Hieroglyphic Illumination because when I don't have enough mana to cast it, then I can just cycle it. Yeah. And it's like... I believe that's true of all cycling cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this one feels particularly <laughs> good, but whatever. Here's a torrential. I'm not gonna, if you enjoy it, that's fine. It was. It just struck me as a weird, you know, weird line to draw, perhaps. Weird, a weird. Yeah, that's true of. It's true of all of them. Yes. Here's torrential gear hulk. Enjoy playing with desert Ceradon, because when I cannot cast it, I, I have the option to cycle, cycle it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Single red. Say this Gearhawk's going to resolve. We saw David Thomas Essence Scatter Michaels. Not sure if Michael will do the same to David's. I enjoy playing with Hundrug. Yes. <laughs> because when I cannot cast it, I can cycle it. You're really just dialing up Hundrug here on the broadcast? Yeah. Is that your go to cycler from Invasion Block or not Invasion Block? Onslaught. Onslaught Block? Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. There it oh, is. Yeah. There, there it is. Two good deals. <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. It, it, I'm gonna go with yeah. no good deals. It's absurd. It's absurd that like Desert Ceradon is a card you cut from your draft decks. Yeah. And this was a thing. This did, it, did this make your decks a lot? No, it was pretty rare. Okay. okay. It was pretty rare. Okay. Two good deals, huh? It's a beast too. I get it. With that, lots of implications. That was there. important. That was yeah. important back then. Right. Amplifying everything else. Yeah. Oh, the cat's here. Yeah. Thomas has decided to go 
a little beat down. Maybe it's splitting the difference. Yeah. A little cat, a little approach, a little Baral beat down. A little bit of everything here, just David Thomas. Well, Glimmer of Genius is the response. You know, maybe maybe it gets traded off. You know, they have a counter spell for it. It's pretty unlikely they that your opponent will have Fumigate in their deck. And pretty if unlikely. What, yeah. If that's what you're concerned about, then sure. Or settle the wreckage. Any of that stuff after sideboard? No way. And I mean, you're getting in your points of Baral. They actually have to do something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently some fans are some some fans of Hundrew get home. The yeah, the old the old Drugglesworth. Got a cult follower. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be signing Hundrugs in no time, just so you know. You did this to yourself. Flores has transformed another treasure map. He's got more treasures for his treasure coves. So drawing cards here for Mike, not gonna be a problem. It's actually gonna be quite easy. Though I do wonder, much like you, if he does have something like Fumigate after sideboard, he'll play a Field of Ruin. He's tapping some mana for something. A lot of it, to be fair. Six. Seven. Is it time to take an approach? All right. It looks like Flores with two negates in the chamber. And keep in mind that those, uh, the treasure can also be sacrificed for mana. Yes. So he's got, he's got a lot of resources to fight this counter war. Here's because a disallow. I think Mike's ready to fight. All right, there's negate on disallow. Well, Flores is, I mean, with, with the amount that Thomas has on the table, he's in the market for gain seven. Oh, yeah. But that, that's actually a real thing. And approach is resolving. Does that mean a player is gaining six plus life in a game? Quick check? Yeah, I think so. It appears that's the case, yeah. I think, I Bang! Think, I think you get it off the cats next turn anyway. I don't care about the cats. I want it from the approach. Mm. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. I'm petty. I wanted it off the approach. Gotcha. That's, but that's one, two, three, four. That's seven, that's seven stamps through, uh, through two rounds, folks. It's good work, Nick. It's good work on the bingo card. Good work. Yeah, I think it was uh, time to maybe pump the brakes on how challenging they were from previous opens. Well, you got to find the balance. Got to right. find the balance. Don't want to be trivial. Yeah. But you also don't want, you know. I'm, I'm happy to play in hard mode. Yeah. I'm totally fine playing in hard mode. Summoner's Pact finds Hundru. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever was, on the, whatever was on the board the last time that I covered one of these. Players who signed up for the 2 p.m. Modern Challenge. Your pairings for round All right. One. I think we got another cat here, folks. Yeah, Thomas has gone to a more aggressive approach. And these cats are getting a little bit larger. This is a pretty healthy attack. You got your plus ones, you got your life links, you got everything else. But can Thomas actually like handle another approach? His battlefield looks great. I mean, this is this is like this might be lethal next turn. Yeah, the, so I'm trying to see here if, if between the rivulet and his treasure coves. If Flores can manipulate it so he draws approach next turn. Th yeah, next yeah. turn. If he just mills himself. So he's, it looks like he's sorting out like this is the line of play here. He doesn't have another turn just from the attackers. No, not really. Flores will draw a card. He can mill four, peel off the cove. So right now, if, if, if I've got my math right, I think Flores cycled a card and then drew a card. So it should be... Yeah, it cycled the farmland, drew for his turn. Yeah, so it should be five cards down now. Mill four gets it to... The top, top card. And then you have your cove. Yep. One, two, three, four, sacrifice that one. one. But does he have enough mana left over still? I guess he's got treasures he can sacrifice. Right, he's still got a, he's still got a lot of treasure. But, you know, he's still got... He's got a, Maybe win like a small counter war too. I don't know if he has enough mana to oh, do all I of this. I mean, it de it, Thomas Thomas could definitely mess this all up depending on what's in his hand. Sure, it's not deterministic that Flores has the game locked up, but I do believe he can manipulate things in such a way to uh, to draw approach this turn. And you know, I'm not trying to play another turn here. You're, uh, I think you're just dead on the table. Oh, he's definitely dead. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. dead. So you gotta do it. Whether it's good enough remains to be seen. All right, Supreme Will here from Flores. 
He's found a card that he likes. There's a land for turn. He's got access to 10 mana with the treasures. Well. Here comes the approach, folks. Clear for takeoff. Dave Thomas. He has at least one counter spell. We're building a stack here, folks. He's got a disallow. Negate and disallow going to go after Flores. Now, Flores, he's going to try to hammer back. The I just don't think he has enough mana to, to do everything well, here. Well, the stack is approach, negate targeting that, negate fighting negate, disallow targeting negate, and now it looks like it looks like Dave has another counter spell, which means approach is not going to resolve past the turn back, unless David Thomas, uh, for some reason, forgets to attack here, everybody, which I'm going to give him a little bit of credit, given his SCG Tour resume. He's going to get the job done. So David Thomas is going to win this match over Michael Flores. Two games to zero. The blue-white approach mirror goes to your Texas native, and for David Thomas, it's a 2-0 start with blue-white approach.